use the power rule and the power of a product or quotient rule to simplify the expression. The quotient of negative 5 x y to the seventh over z to the fifth all raised to the power of 3. Now as the instructions imply we are likely to use several uh, rules that apply to exponents uh, to simplify this expression. Um, simplify obviously there are parentheses that exist um, around this quotient and there uh, are things that can be combined like separate exponents 7 and 3 so we'll take it a step at a time. Now the uh, power of a quotient power of a quotient rule looks like this. When you have a quotient it has one exponential expression in the numerator a different exponential expression in the denominator all raised to an outside power all raised to an outside power call it P. The power of a quotient says write the quotient with everything in the numerator given its own set of grouping symbols everything in the denominator given its own set of grouping symbols and then let me see if I can do this in color take this P and it looks like distributive property that crosses uh, enters the numerator but then also crosses over the fraction bar to the denominator <clears throat> to me this is the end of the quotient rule because what kicks in is power of a power rule at this point where we actually multiply these two powers together if that's what we had but let's take it a step at a time so I'm suggesting that this power of 3 is this external power P and what we're being asked to do by the power of a quotient rule is to rewrite the quotient this way everything that's in the numerator gets its own set of grouping symbols everything that's in the denominator gets its own set of grouping symbols and then the external power is going to apply to the outside of these grouping symbols here comes that three now in the numerator what we have the opportunity we have an opportunity to apply what's known as the power of a product rule power of a product rule says power power of a product rule says that when you have multiple factors a to the m times b to the n that can't be combined because they're unlike each other and then someone is asking you to apply an external power to this product of two things then we're asked to rewrite each factor in the product given their own set of grouping symbols and it looks like distributive property I can't quite say that because it's not it's not multiplication across addition and subtraction but it looks like this P distributes to each of the two factors like this so we can kinda just think of it like a distributive property for um, exponents over other exponents in a product so look here's what it's saying there's multiply here we actually have three factors in this numerator uh, product that's inside of these parentheses so the product rule is saying this product rule says give each one of these three factors their own set of grouping symbols I'm gonna go one step beyond and say this negative 5 I'm gonna put inside parentheses and raise it to a power of 1 we want exponents showing on each one of these factors in here and I'm gonna capture the negative sign with the 5 in parentheses because that will affect the uh, answer in many problems now this X has got its own exponent of 1 I want the factor and its exponent showing and give it its own set of grouping symbols times the factor before it and then here's this y to the seventh and it gets its own set of grouping symbols with exponents showing now comes this 
a so-called you know distributive property where the outside power is going to distribute to each of those factors this way an external factor of three is applied to each of these uh, factors in the original numerator now there's another rule that we're going to apply right now it applies immediately to the denominator and that is called the power of a power rule that I mentioned a little bit earlier the power of power rule says that when you have a an exponential expression being raised to an external power like this you have a single exponential expression being raised to an outside power we are able to multiply those two powers together and remove the parentheses around the original uh, exponential expression we're actually ready to apply this rule right now in the denominator this is a power like this n an external power of three being raised uh, raising an internal power on the z of five so what we end up seeing here is the parentheses come away from the z the five and the three multiply together <clears throat> and we've applied the power of a power rule now if you can see um, we're about to multiply those together in, in a few steps each of these power applied to it a, a, a individual a single exponential expression a power um, raising applied to a single exponential expression on this x each of these is the power of a power rule opportunity to apply this rule to these three factors in the numerator so if we do this all in the next step <clears throat> excuse me do this all in the next step we have negative five in parentheses x is coming out of the parentheses y is coming out of the parentheses in the numerator we have z that is going to be now have five times three is fifteen inside of uh, each of these we have one times three one times three on the x and seven times three on the y if I go ahead and simplify those right on top of um, these uh, expressions, these product expressions, 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 3 is 3, and 7 times 3 is 21. Now we're expected to, let's go ahead and clean this up so we have a clear view of what comes next. If I come this way, I have negative 5 to the third power. We are supposed to go ahead and evaluate, apply the fundamental property of exponents to evaluate this. When, when a number, uh, an exponent is applied to a number, a real number, an integer, fraction, doesn't matter, we're pretty much expected to expand using the fundamental property and multiply it. So if I stay on expanding this, negative times negative makes negative. Uh, times another negative ex excuse me I'm gonna back up negative times negative makes positive times another negative so we, in other words negative times negative makes positive but times a third negative is positive times negative these are gonna make a negative these three negatives multiply to make a negative then 5 times 5 is 25 times another 5 is 125 so we're looking at the numerator as having a negative 125 in it. All of this came down to negative 125. Here we have x to the third. Here we have y to the 21st. And in the denominator we have z to the 15th. Now the last step we could possibly do here, because I don't see anything else that can combine, the last step we could do is say that a negative numerator divided by a positive denominator I don't see any negative signs in the denominator so I consider it positive I, I say this negative divided by positive makes negative Ma making that statement pulls the negative sign out of the to the left of the qu fraction uh, this quotient and we have 125 x to the third y to the 21st over z to the 15th 
I believe this is a suitable answer because we simplified everything. Uh, parentheses are gone, uh, all exponents have been combined, and the negative sign has been taken out of the fraction. I'm going to look for all the components. I'm going to I see a negative. These three answers have the negative sign. Uh, that's good. The D doesn't, so it can't be D. You know, if, if we're looking at a multiple choice test, 125, A has 125, uh, and and the negative sign. Well, we got this so far in A and D. X to the third between A and A, excuse me, A and C. We have X to the third and X to the third. So we've got all that in those two answers. Y to the 21st. The only answer between A and C that has Y to the 21st is C. And then I verify one more time to see if it's got a Z to the 15th and a bottom. C has all the critical components, and we're going to choose that as the correct response if this was a test or a, an exam.